So you're looking at some data journalism project like ProPublica's Dollars for Docs and say, wow, that's cool. They're putting together data from seven different drug companies in order to discover which drug company paid which doctor to recommend their drugs. Nice. So you decide to dig up some public data yourself to do some data journalism on important social issues. Like, say, let's go to that government's IT dashboard and get data about projects that government has contracted out to private companies. Download and open it in a spreadsheet program and check out that type of contract column. Firm fixed price. What could that possibly mean? But whatever it means, FFP probably means the same thing. Time and materials. T and M. Wouldn't those be the same as well? And should there be an S here or not? You would quickly discover that public free open data can be inconsistent and messy. Think of it as raw materials that you have to refine before it's useful. And that's where Google Refine comes in. It is a free power tool for working with messy data. So let's load the same data into Google Refine. and look at that type of contract column again. One core feature of Refine is the text facet. When created from a column, the text facet groups together identical cells in that column across rows and show you the number of rows in each group. For example, 512 rows contain FFP in their type of contract cells. Clicking on FFP inside the text facet filters the data table on the right to show only those 512 rows out of 5200 rows in total. Now there are two other groups that look like FFP as well. Clicking edit on the first one shows us that it has a trailing space. Removing that space would merge it into the first group and increase the count to 513. By condensing all those 5200 rows into 800 something groups, Refine makes it easier to locate these inconsistencies. In fact, if we suspect that there are trailing white space in other groups as well, we could apply a trimming transformation on the whole column to fix that whole family of problem in one shot. And now we are down to just 785 groups. We could even rename FFP to firm fixed price. That perform a find and replace operation on 513 cells. And we could also change T and M to time and materials and so forth. You can sort the groups in the facet by count to find the biggest groups. Firm fixed price is the biggest group, consisting of 800 something rows. But it would have been even bigger if its many alternative forms were written in the same way. Time and materials has the very same inconsistency problem. Google Refine has a clustering feature that helps you fix this family of problem. Essentially, the clustering feature tries to group the groups based on some heuristics. And you can pick different heuristics to adjust how aggressive the feature works. Select any group of groups that you want to merge and set the desired new cell value. When these groups get merged, every cell belonging to each of these groups will be replaced with this new cell value. We can select all groups of groups to be merged and click Merge Selected and Close. That changed several hundreds of cells in a few clicks. By grouping the cells and then grouping the groups, Google Refine shows you a big picture of the data and surfaces its inconsistencies and lets you fix those inconsistencies. Now those are very powerful editing operations that affect hundreds or thousands of cells. What if you make a mistake? Not to worry, Google Refine tracks all editing operations that you have taken so that you can roll back to the previous state or undo all the way back to the beginning when you just loaded the data. So go ahead, make mistakes. This freedom to make mistakes encourages us to play more with the data. For example, let's look at the total value of contract column. Since this is a numeric column, we create a numeric facet rather than a text facet. The contract value ranges from 0 to 20 million. The distribution is extremely skewed. So a common trick is to use the log scale. We can change the expression that defines this numeric facet. Google Refine provides a very powerful expression language, but in this case, we only need to take the log of the cell's value. 
Here's a preview of the expression we have entered as apply on the first few visible rows. When the preview looks right, click OK. Now the distribution is more informative. But first, let's look at the choices below. There are 5,000-something rows with numeric values and 27 with errors. Selecting only the error rows shows us the problem. Namely, they are all zeros, and the log of zero is negative infinity, hence the errors. But how can any contract have zero cost? Curious, isn't it? The distribution histogram is also intriguing. Let's filter for rows in the lower end of the range. Since the log values are negative, we expect the original values to be less than 1. Obviously, no contract can cost less than $1. So these numbers must be in thousand, million, or billion. Since this one here is a three-year contract, the only unit that makes sense is billion, which makes the contract's value to be roughly $700,000. On the other end of the range, we find a contract with a value of 19 million. This is already too large to be in unit of billion. So, apparently, the numbers in this one column can be in different units? So, that's what Google Refine is for. Seeing a big picture of your data, discovering inconsistencies, and fixing them. Google Refine helps you refine messy, raw data into something useful, and ask questions in the process. And if you're working on some super sensitive data for a juicy news story, know that Google Refine is not a web service so you don't have to upload your data to use it. It's a desktop application that you download, install, and run on your computer, even though you interact with it through your web browser. So your super sensitive data never has to leave your machine to get cleaned up. We can only show you a small fraction of what Google Refine can do in eight minutes. So check out the rest of the videos and give Google Refine a try.